Performing repairs on vintage computers is par for the course these days, but while most people tend to concentrate on motherboards, other components can also fail with age. Such is the case with the power supply from Apple's Macintosh 2SI. So can I get this pair of them working again? The Mac 2SI was a popular mid-range model from 1990, and like a lot of other computers from that era, failing electrolytic capacitors are a common problem. Replacing them on the motherboard is straightforward enough, but something that can also keep the machine from working is a failed power supply, which has become a notorious problem with this model. Previously, I was able to get my own 2SI fully restored and working great. And since then, I was given two more PSUs to try to sort out. Both have had some repairs done already, but neither works correctly. And while I'm no power supply expert, I figured it couldn't hurt to take a look. They arrived disassembled, and so the first order of business was to put them back together and see what, if anything, they did. I pulled the power supply out of my own 2SI and labeled it so it wouldn't get mixed up with the others, then dropped one of the problematic ones in its place. To my surprise, the machine powered on. But only briefly. It turned itself off just a couple seconds later. So it's trying to work, but something is causing it to go into what I can only guess is a self-protect mode. Okay, so let's take a closer look. All the through-hole caps have clearly been replaced with what looks like good quality parts from Nichicon and Panasonic. It also looks like the two surface mount caps on the vertical daughter board have been swapped too, which is also a good sign. But looking a bit closer at the PCB, I noticed something. It has markings for capacitor polarity, this little white dot corresponding to the negative side. The new caps appeared to match up accordingly, except for one stuck in the middle of a group. It's in backwards, and what's more, it looks like it's bulging a little bit. Could this be the culprit? I desoldered the cap and took a closer look. It's a 2200 microfarad part, and out of curiosity, I tested it with my ESR meter. It came back at about half the rated capacitance, so being installed backwards seems to have damaged it, which probably isn't surprising. I pulled out my parts bin and was lucky to find a few spares, likely from when I recapped my own 2SI's PSU. It got installed the correct way, then soldered in place and the leads trimmed. There was a lot of flux residue on the bottom of the PCB, so I gave it a good scrubbing and set it aside to dry for a while. Disassembling and reassembling these power supplies is probably one of the major reasons why they tend to get overlooked. It's a tedious affair. But with it back together and in the 2SI, I crossed my fingers and fired up the computer. It powered on and stayed on this time. I left it running for a while and it was totally fine. One down, one to go. The second PSU had a note that it was dead, so I opted to go straight to inspecting it. There was a couple of differences with this one. First, all the caps were installed the correct way. But one of them looked different. This little spot of hot glue suggests it's still one of the originals. Ironically, it's in the same position as the reversed cap on the other supply, so I got it removed for a closer look. It's definitely the original part, as the leakage on the bottom is a telltale sign. Interestingly, it hasn't fully failed. The meter says it has an acceptable ESR, but its capacitance is slightly higher than it should be and this is common with caps on their way out. I installed the last spare I had on hand, then kept looking for any other problems. And here's a big one. The SMD caps on the daughter board are the originals, and sadly, there are signs they're leaking too. I got the board desoldered and pulled out to inspect under the microscope, and ugh, this doesn't look good. The electrolyte from the caps caused some serious corrosion on the traces. I picked a couple to test for continuity, and they seemed okay, but I still had my doubts. I pressed ahead using hot tweezers to remove the old caps, then cleaned up the pads as best I could. 
I ultimately did manage to get new parts installed, but it wasn't very confidence inspiring, and trying to bodge around all the corrosion would be a nightmare. But I've had ugly PCBs work just fine before, so I figured it was worth a shot. The board went back in, then like the first PSU, the bottom side got a good scrubbing. Reassembled and in the 2SI, I hit the power key, and... Absolutely nothing. Hmm, the fuses tested okay, so I probed the DC output connector with the unit plugged in. I didn't get anything on the main voltage rails, but the 5 volt standby line was working. This suggests the PSU simply wasn't turning on. I had an idea why, but wanted to try one more thing before throwing in the towel. I removed the daughter board again, then stuck the secondary side of the PCB into my ultrasonic cleaner in an attempt to remove any electrolyte that remained under the components. After a few minutes, I pulled it out and threw in the daughter board for the same treatment. There was plenty of residue on both boards, based on just how yellow the liquid turned. I wasn't very hopeful, but got the PSU reassembled for one more test. And sure enough, it's still dead. The damage to that daughter board is simply too great. Capacitor electrolyte can be insidious, wreaking havoc in places you wouldn't expect. One or two bad traces is not a huge deal, but I'd estimate that at least half of this board has corrosion damage. The good news is that while it's not feasible to fix, this PSU won't go to waste. Retro parts maker KMAC Vintage teased on social media a modern replacement for it that uses the enclosure, input panel, and wiring harness to maintain a stock appearance. So I ended up with a 50% success rate between these two power supplies, and I'd estimate that's about par for the course with these overall. Reversing a cap is an easy mistake to make, it can happen to anyone. Things like the damaged daughter board is the bigger problem though, and they'll only get worse over time. Of course, if you aren't comfortable working on a power supply, then you shouldn't, but the secondary or DC side is usually pretty straightforward to do basic repairs on, like replacing caps. Long term, custom modern replacements are probably the best path forward, and it's great to see progress on that front. If you're quick, your existing power supply may still be salvageable. But as we've seen, time is definitely not on our side. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Please consider supporting my work over on Patreon, and as always, thanks for watching.